All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We are live. Um, welcome to Block Nine Two Nine. Today we've got another topic. Just waiting for people to come in. Um, it's a Saturday today. Welcome, welcome. I see there is one uh, participant that has just joined us. Um, here again at Block 929, um, trying to share some wisdom. Um, I hope that you watched the other video about the young man who was doing um, mechanical work, uh, fixing my generator. So after this uh, live show, I'm sharing with you part two so that you can see what the young man did to my generator. You know, I thought the guy can, can um, be able to fix the generator, but I, I don't have to reveal a lot of things. But uh, yeah, please don't miss that video. Watch the young man working on my generator and see what he did. But yeah, um, today we just want to talk about, uh, you know, how you can plan your move from diaspora to coming to Africa. Yeah, because I think you need to have a plan if you want to move, because it's a, it's a big move and the failure is not an option. So you will see. All right, aphrodisiac, virus and spa. Hello from Canada. Yo, Canada is in the house. <laughs> is, it, um, is it Ontario or where is it? Toronto. <laughs> yeah, I've chosen Ghana. Oh, you've chosen Ghana. Wow. That's good. Why did you choose Ghana? That I would like to know. Because I hear that Ghana is uh, cost of living is very expensive. But yeah, that, most of the people don't go. Oh, you are Ontario, <laughs> Toronto, Ontario. All right. Okay. Tell me why did you choose Ghana? Um, uh, oh, you are Ghanaian. Oh, so it's home already. So there's no problem. And you, uh, you know your corners, you know your loops. Okay, so are you doing, are you making any, any preparations? Like for me, when I, st I decided I'm building a villa and spa business. Wow, that's great. I'm wishing you all the best. I'm wishing you all the best. That's the best to do. Wow, you're building a villa and spa business. That's great. Are you in that business there in, in Canada? Is that what you're doing at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so that's great. I mean, it's home. You're going back home, and uh, I think you know, yes, I have a five-year plan. Wow, that's good. That's good. Uh, even myself, when I was, uh, you know, moving from South Africa to come back to Malawi, um, I had planned, you know, I, it was a long-term plan, but I prematurely cut the plan to move back because of what happened. I think you've, you've watched the other live session that I did last time, I talked about why, how I moved from South Africa to come in. I was kind of forced to, to cut short my, my plans, but yes, I was in, the, in, in on a long, long term plan. Um, no, I'm a retired international wedding photographer. Wow. So you were, is that what you're doing in Canada? You're doing photography there or you were doing while well, you were in Ghana? Uh, I stayed at many hotels across the world. Wow. You've, so you've moved all around the world. That's very, very... So you must have a vast uh, knowledge. I mean, like experience. Huh? So God directed me to Ghana to start my hospitality business. Yeah. I think uh, home is best. And um, when you uh, have been uh, in the West for a long time, there's so much to learn. And then you have to come to Ghana and implement these things. And you will see how it goes. It's going to go very, very well. And uh, I see uh, through YouTube, you know, through the YouTubers, that uh, Ghana is, is doing, 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 doing very well. So it would be a best, a best idea to really go back home and do something. Yes, I was a photographer in Canada for 11 years. Wow. So you must be experienced when it comes to taking photographs. You know, me, I'm not an experienced guy. I still struggle. I remember when I was still in South Africa, I was taking pictures. I used to take my uh, family's uh, pictures, but they, the pictures were very good. But, you know, so along the way, I stopped, uh, you know, taking pictures. I just got hurt, uh, um, caught up in what I'm doing now. 
Uh, I'm so happy to see that you are um, planning to go back home and you have already a five-year plan because that's the only way. You need to have your long-term long, long -term goals and long-term plans. Like for me, when I decided that I'm going to come to Malawi, I started having, you know, like formulating a plan to think of what am I going to do when I uh, come back home. And that's when I decided I'm going to go into the property industry. So I started learning more about the property. I didn't know anything about property. Like enough, I had a house that uh, we were given in South Africa, you know, uh, RDP house. So I started doing my work on that house. So, yeah, it actually helped me. There was a lot of things I was learning on, on that house before I came here. Uh, Aphrodisia says South Africa or Namibia was my other options and backup in case Ghana don't work for me. I think maybe Namibia, South Africa is is a very is, South Africa is a tough it's a tough country to crack. Eh? Yeah, it requires you to have uh, big capital. Um, yeah, lots of capital, but you know life is not so cheap there. But it's not like it's not doable. It's doable, but uh, it is a bit tough. I think Namibia, you can be as easily, um, uh, you can be able to to do something that side. Uh, um, South Africa, yes, you may, but uh, hey, it's, it's not an easy platform. It requires good money. Uh, Regno Music. Oh, welcome, Regno Music. Grace and peace, my brother. Peace to you too. Thank you very much. I don't know when you're coming to Africa. Are you also having plans to come to Africa? Uh, Tell me if you're coming to Africa. If you're just joining us, please uh, introduce yourself. We want to know who's here and then also where you are watching us from. If you have got any plans, in, you know, like you want to come to Africa, please share. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Regno says, uh, Regno says, everybody, please strike that like button. Please, 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 please strike that like button. This is a, a very important topic. Please share the links to... Uh, your WhatsApp groups. Um, I'm, I've, I've been trying to share this uh, to my WhatsApp group also. I've got a WhatsApp group called Entrepreneurs Hub. I started that group to be helping uh, young entrepreneurs in Africa. So we have a lot of membership. We have members from South Africa. We have got members from Zimbabwe, all over Africa. But the majority is Malawi and South Africa. So yeah, I, 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 I want to share, I was just trying to check there. I want to share the link there so that we have some people who can watch us. Aphrodisiac says, next time have this super chat so we can help your live stream with fans. Yeah, super chat. I, I need to, um, to, to understand these things, how they work. Because uh, I remember last time, is it Grace? Um, she said that she wants to be my moderator. I think I need a moderator to help me with these things. Uh, Shell Ami says Rwanda, Uganda, and Kenya. So you're choosing Rwanda, Uganda, and Kenya. Can you tell me, Shell, um, why are you choosing these countries? Um, uh, have you done uh, some homework about the countries? Do you understand the culture and everything? Um, please let me know. Uh, L.E.T. says, hi, Ted. I'm watching from Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta again. Yeah, that's great. Welcome, welcome. Hit the like button, please. Hit the like button so that maybe we can see, get more people to come in. Like the music said, we're trying to make it to Africa by end of the year. Wow. Wow. That's 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 very good. That's very, very good. And then uh, which country did you say you want to go to? Um, uh, which country do you want to, to go to Regmo, Regmo, Regmo Music? Uh, DC. Hey, welcome, welcome. I haven't seen you for some time. You know, I've, the last um, live, you were not there. And uh, last time we agreed that you were going to send me a WhatsApp so that I can be reminding you every time I'm, on, I'm live. But I never got your WhatsApp, DC. Where were you? Hell up 929. How how you do? My plan is to visit first. My country, my country is I'm visiting Rwanda and Malawi. Yeah. <laughs> Please come and visit me when you come here. Uh, next week, on Tuesday, I might be with uh, Kevin. We are going to have a live session. It will be done at uh, 2 o'clock, I'm sure. Uh, but we, let, Let's hope that he's got free time. 2 o'clock Malawi time. Uh, he wants to share with you guys um, how you can come to Malawi and start a business. You know, that, like He's got a little bit of knowledge of how you can do it. 
So yeah, but if you miss that live, you can always watch it. Uh, so I'll try to go and speak to Kevin about it. Yeah, so yeah, Rwanda and Malawi. Uh, you know, Malawi and Rwanda have got something very much in common because uh, Malawi is known as the warm heart of Africa. Rwanda is known as the heart of Africa. And I understand that the plan for the development growth of Rwanda uh, they also managed, they tapped into the Malawi's plan, which was which was called the Vision 2020. So they took the document, they made use of it, and actually it helped them. But here in Malawi, it didn't help us because we never really in implemented that document. So we have something in common. Um, uh, Shell Ami says, first visit studying culture for past three months. Oh, you've been studying the culture there. Yeah, you see, you have to come, uh, first you have to come to Africa. Uh, because it's actually a, I can imagine that it's a, it's a new experience. You come to Africa, everything is new, everything is different. So you need to actually understand because you're coming from a, uh, an environment where everything is fast. Then you come to Africa, everything is slow. So you need to learn how to, you know, apply your brakes and start slowing down so that you now uh, you are at par with the the pace of Africa, because here we do things at our own, pay, our own pace. Um, Regmon Reg, Reg, Music says we have friends in Kenya that are helping us out, but we are also considering Zambia. Yeah, Zambia is not bad also. Zambia is, is, is also growing very, very fast. Um, I see that uh, there's a lot of development that's going on in Zambia. So Zambia is not going to be a very difficult play country to be in. I should just say all Africa is, is, is not bad. It's just uh, that you need to, first of all, understand the culture because Africa is a diverse continent. You know, we have got uh, different cultures and the, each country has got its own culture. But when you go in the country, you're also going to have a lot of uh, cultures that are inside there. People living with different cultures that have been growing up with. So you need to, to learn. But we, we do have some some aspects of our cultures that are actually um, universal. So yeah, you need to go to, to Africa, visit and understand, uh, you know, adapt. And then if you're coming quite often on and off, on and off, then suddenly you can move in. Some people will, will come and buy land and then go back and then they'll be building their house um, little by little. Yeah, like what I've been doing with my house, I've been building it a little by little. It's doable. Uh, Westside TMZ, he says, I, I moved to Tanzania from Atlanta, Georgia. Did you move already? How, how is Tanzania? How are you coping? How is, how is everything that side? I would like to know. Uh, okay, Westside is asking Eli, is asking Eli, what part of Atlanta are you? Because Eli is also, I'm, I'm sure Eli is also from Atlanta, maybe. So, yeah, Ellie is watching from, from at, at Atlanta and then is asking Westside which part of Atlanta you are. We are now becoming a family, you know, so we'll be knowing each other here. Every now, every now that you're coming, we will start getting used to each other. And this is very wonderful. One day we're going to open, maybe as a group here, we're going to open our own WhatsApp group and we're also going to open our, our own Facebook group so that we can now you know interact even much better. Yeah. All right. So uh West Side says uh, I, I I want to start a business in Tanzania. Is is block business a good business in Tanzania? Block business is a good business in a country. Uh, and that I can tell you in any country that you are going to go the block business is going to be very good. The reason being that um, most of the countries, it was only Malawi, I don't know which other country, but it was Malawi that was behind, but almost all countries in Africa, they have been using cement blocks for their construction. But most of them are still using the old ways or primitive way of making the blocks. They're using the mod that they just stamp and then they tilt it over. So if you can bring machinery um, to those countries, you go to a country and you bring in machinery, you are going to do very, well, very, very well. Because these machineries, they are very expensive, the ones that come from China. And the, in Africa, there are not many people who are making machines, mechanic machines like I do. I understand that, I know that it's uh, me making machines here in Malawi, and there's also a couple of guys that have followed me making machines here in Malawi. Then we see um, Zambia, they do make, 
and South Africa. And I understand also in Namibia they do make, but most of the uh, countries in Central Africa, West Africa, there are not many country, many people that are making these machines. I and I saw guys making in, in Nigeria, but some of them, the machines that they're making are not, not very good. So if you can come and start this business, I'm, I'm very sure you're going to do very well. The other business that I would like you diasporans to understand about is the, uh, the business of crushing stone, you know, uh, for quarry. If you can be able to get that machine, even if you get the one that you put on a trailer, you start with a small one. Within two years, you will come back to me and tell me that, Ted, thank you very much for giving me this advice. This, bis this business of crushing stone is only done on a professional level by people from the West. It's an, I've never seen in a country, uh, maybe in West Africa or Central uh, East Africa, there is some people who are doing that. I think I've seen before somebody was doing stone crushing in West Africa, but that guy's got a big business. So he's on YouTube. I'm, I'm sure I must check for the the video. Somebody did a, uh, uh, if not if, if it is not Wodemeyer, he visited somebody who crushes stone and is selling uh, um, quarry. It's a big big business. Yeah. So if you can get a stone crusher and then you bring it to Africa, any country in Africa, okay, I'm sure you can't use it in like in Gambia because Gambia doesn't have quarry. Most of the times they're using a certain stone that is not like the quarry stone that we use. I understand that if they want quarry stone, they go to Senegal. Yeah, but do your homework, find out the country that's got a lot of uh, rocks so that you can go there. Like Zimbabwe has got lots of plenty of rocks. You can go there and mine the rocks and crush it and you do supply quarry for making building roads, for doing foundations and many, many things that are needed for it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, block business is, is not bad. It's a good business. John Fisher, how are you? Please, please tell us where you where you watching us from. Tell us where you're watching us from. John Fisher says, I want to move to Africa. Please, you must have a plan. The first thing, is to decide, you know, you make the decision, I want to move to Africa. Now, the second thing is, which country am I going to move, where am I going to go to? You know, you, you go on the map, you look at the countries, you Google and watch a few YouTube videos from those countries, learn the culture, and uh, also even if um, you can you can Google on Google, you can check on YouTube, and, then, and also you can ask around people just to know the culture of the country, and uh, see if um, not only the culture, but also the economy, you know, the policies that they have, the business opportunities that they have, you know, like, uh, is it a rich country or is it a poor country, you know? And then you, once you've chosen the country you want and see if you can fit in. And then once you've made a decision to say, okay, this is the country that I want to go, then you start now planning to say, okay, let me go for a visit with my family so that we experience how the life is in that country. You know, you will come to Africa, you will visit the country, spend at least a month, travel. Don't focus on tourism in the, the tourism areas. I think the first trip that you do when you come to the, a country, don't go for tourism. Go and uh, visit the people, you know, go to their cities, go to their villages, go to their uh, locations, understand the life of the people. And then, then when you may be making the other trips, then you want to know, now you want to see more about the business, you, if you are visiting tourism centers and all those stuff. But if you come the first time and you uh, blend with the people, it will be much easier. It will be the best way for you to understand the people themselves. Yeah. Um, I just visited a rabbit farm on my vacation in my homeland. I'm interested in rabbit farming. Yes. Um, Many people are doing rabbit farming here, and it's a it's a it's a fast business because I understand the rabbits they multiply like crazy, and the, and the, uh, people are doing the rabbit uh, farming, and there are some people are doing the quail quail farming. It's a bed that the people do farming, more especially in Malawi. I see some people have started doing the rabbit farming and the quail farming. Yeah, so quail, I think it became very popular because I understand it's like for medicinal reasons. Uh, that people eat the quail, but yeah, so there's a lot of uh, that kind of farming. So it's not a bad idea. Um, but also do a homework in, in the particular country that you're going. 
is is there a market for those rabbits? Because you might go to a place where um, you will be able to raise the rabbits, but then you won't be able to sell them. So yeah, please do do some homework there. Um, M. Adam says, not that different. We are all we all got Gucci polos. <laughs> M. Adams says you must understand the political system. Yes. Is the country authoritarian or do they have resilient political systems? Yes. You know, some corruption. You know, do they are they serious about eliminating corruption? You know, things like that. Um, it's very important to, to understand. And they're also the culture of the people. Do they embrace foreigners you know if you're a foreigner you come in the country will they accept you will they embrace you if they don't embrace the foreigners okay which areas are you going to live where you think that uh, in the same country they might accommodate you because some countries you find that the areas that people um don't allow well, strangers there's areas where they embrace strangers in the same country so yeah you can always do your homework and see how you can adapt yourself to um uh, can you get extended visa or residence of of uh, you by land? Yeah, these things um, you're gonna um, learn more on Tuesday when I speak to Kevin. He might be able to answer these questions. And in the future, if I get a chance, I might you not know, even go and uh, interview the people from the immigration and so that they can help us and see how things are, are supposed to work. Um, uh, John Fisher says my residence is in. Atlanta too. Also, oh, there's a lot of people from Atlanta. Uh, I know I used to have, I have a friend who also stay, lives in Atlanta, Georgia. So when I visit America, I want to go first to Atlanta, Georgia. And, I, and I'm seeing most of the people here, you are from Atlanta. John Fisher says, okay, Atlanta in Dunwood, Dunwood. Uh, Shell Ame says, interested in Eastern, Eastern DRC also. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I understand DRC has got a lot of uh, opportunities. There's a lot of uh, opportunities for growth, and there's money there. So, yeah, I don't know uh, nowadays how it is with the, um, the situation, but um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a country that is, it's, it's got a lot, a lot of opportunities that have been untapped. Um, Okay, what kind of stone crusher, like a jackhammer or something else? Um, uh, normally people are using, yeah, they, I don't know whether the jackhammer is the one that goes, you know, crushes the stone like this, not the one that rotates and, and with, with uh, solid balls inside. No, not that one. But the one that really crushes the stone. If you can get that one, I'm sure you will do very well. Here in Africa, most of those businesses are not being done by black people. So it's high time we started going into that business. And it's a very big business. It's good, good business. But it requires uh, good capital. That's the, that's the thing. You, you need to have some money. Um, John Fisher said, I'm in England right now. Oh, so you, right now it's, 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 you, you just have supper. You're sitting there and you're watching me. Because those in America, I know they are able to watch me now because it's Saturday there, I'm sure. And they are sitting at home, they are off from work. But during the week, most of them, they are at work. So like DC didn't come, uh, see today is available now. Uh, um, I have a plan. Okay, what is the plan, uh, John Fisher? Shell Army says, a crinker. Yeah, that much, the crinker one is, the one, I don't know, you know, the crinker is used for, for making cement. And um, I don't know how they make, because when I went to visit a cement manufacturing plant, they were using a bow mill. Yeah. But this one, I think it's a jackhammer that he's talking about. That's the one you should get. Yeah. Uh, John F jo Joanne Fisher says, I have a plan, maybe for Malawi. <laughs> All right, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Come to Malawi, please. Eric says, I'm interested in how you are enjoying your solar system. Is it working for you? Has it made a difference in your home and your workplace? Okay, with the solar system, um, the, the, the guy came here and he did the first phase of the solar system. So what he did, he installed the inverters 
and then he also installed the battery. And now, so the battery was was charged when he installed it. So he he told me that I must leave it on overnight until it drains it down. So it has drained it down now. But now the next thing we need to do is to make uh, the stands for the panels. So I haven't had a chance for me to to weld the stands because we we've, we've had some work in the workshop that we're doing. So there have been a couple of people that want the machine machines and all the other stuff so for me to stop the guys from doing it and to do that uh, i couldn't do that so what i did i just told the guys i said no do the work first and then we are gonna do the uh, thing when we get a chance so this week i should be able to make the stand and then we're going to call the guy to come and finish to install the solar panels then after that i can tell you but right now the solar that i'm using the one the lights you are seeing now is the solar that i've been using in my house I have um, 3,000 watts uh, solar system that I've been using all along. But uh, with that system, I can only run my deep freezer and uh, the lights in the house and charge our phones, listen to music and watch it or put on the TV if I want to. But I can't be able to cook with it and do a lot of work. I can use a drill machine, but I can't do a lot of work with it. So. I'm just waiting to put the panels on the roof, then I'll give you feedback. I'll even share the video, uh, the full video so that you can watch. So yeah, I haven't yet uh, started using the solar. Uh, Redmond Music says, yes, I totally agree. M. Adams, New York City. Yeah, I, I one, once I'm in America, New York City, Atlanta, Georgia, I have to visit those areas. Uh, Saturday, 12... 12, 18 p.m. in Tacoma, Washington. Oh, so you just finished eating lunch. Here in Africa, we eat lunch at 12 o'clock. <laughs> I don't know what time you eat lunch that side. Man, Man they said, Zambia has reserved land for people that would want to relocate there. And the visa you, is granted upon arrival at point of entry. Wow, this is very, very nice. Wow. You know, Malawi, we are, we are, we are left, being left behind. We should do, implement that also. Because the West Africa, they, have, they already started doing. Now I see Zambia, my neighbor is doing it. That's great. Arrive at point entry and is $25. And an English speaking country, extremely peaceful and welcome. Yeah, very, very welcome people. We are just the same as uh, Zambia, uh, like us here in Malawi. Uh, very welcoming people. Kiri Ryan says, You are very inspiring, brother. Thank you for the advice about stone crushers. Yes, those are the businesses that I would like diasporans when they come here to do you know you should be in the solar industry big business you should be in this in the stone crushing industry which is like almost like mining industry because stone crushing is, is mining industry you should be in that industry and i'm sure um you will be able to help us to be able to sell the quarry dust or the stone at a reasonable price because at the moment we're buying at a very very high price uh, it's a monopoly. There are people from the West running these businesses and they're just charging as much as they can. Yeah. Um, John Fisher's not maybe I'm coming. Okay. Lady Matt. Hey, welcome. Are you still in Blanta? Hello, Uncle Ted and everyone. Yeah. Are you still in Blanta? Welcome, welcome, welcome. When you are in Irirongo, please, please, please visit me. Uh, Carolyn said, Atlanta. Atlanta, is it Atlanta, Georgia? GA is Georgia, is it? And Sherry Ami said, can foreigners own land in Malawi? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. But then there's our uh, so processes. Uh, I'm sure Craven on Tuesday is going to help us. Um, but yes, you can. Uh, Malawi is, is actually encouraging investors to come in. So um, they wouldn't stop you from doing that. So, But I'm, I'm sure you lease the land, something like that. Um, what is what is what is average cost per acre? I need to do some homework on that one. Or what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna interview one of the companies that are do, dealing with the property land, and then maybe they can give us enough information. So there is a company in town in Longwe. I'll go there, one of the companies that I know, and speak to them so that they can give us that information. Uh, Lady Matt says, yes, still in Blanta. I'm coming next week to Lilongwe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we'll, we'll meet next week when you are in Lilongwe. Uh, it, is, it can be great to be meeting also uh, my YouTube subscribers. 
I meet a lot of my Facebook followers, but also my YouTube su subscribers. It can be very nice. I would like to grow a, a, a big community on YouTube because YouTube is limitless. With Facebook, I can only have 5,000 friends and then the rest of the people, they just follow me. But uh, YouTube is limitless. I can make as many, many friends as, as possible. All right. Uh, uh, Johan jo Fischer says, yes, I want to know the cost of I'm coming to buy land in Malawi. Yes, I'm going to do some homework and then maybe take one of the agents. Then we'll drive in town and go to these plots and they will tell us about the prices and all those kind of things. I don't know which land you're looking for. Are you looking for land in the city to build a house or are you looking for land for farming? It all depends. Yeah. And also next week, if all goes well, me and Tamara, we're going to Balaka. Our cow is almost going to deliver. <laughs> uh, there's, there's, there's even wondering why it's taking long, but they say anytime our cow is going to deliver. So we're just praying that the, the calf is, um, is a female, female cow. So if it's a female, then yeah, then we'll be happy. If it's a bull, we are going to swap it. When it grows a little bit bigger, we go and swap and get a female one because we want to multiply the cows. We have a strategy. Yes. Uh, okay, so you, you want to come from diaspora, you want to come to Africa. Just like we have just said, first of all, the number one thing is the decision. You know, most of the people, they fail because they can't make the decision. Yeah, So you have to decide whether you, you want to come to Africa and you have to have the reasons why you want to come to Africa. I know most of the people, they want to come for, to Africa because they're fed up with the, that first life, that uh, tough life, that side. You know, in Africa, you get a chilled life. Um, life is very slow. So you're living life the way it was meant to be. When you are that side, you have to always be on your feet. You have to always be on the go. And the uncertainty in the West is very high. When I look at what's going on through watching what's happening on YouTube, I can see that the uncertainty, the uncertainty levels there are very high. You know, when I mean uncertainty is when you live a life where you don't know what could happen in the next three months or next year or whatsoever. Anything can happen. You can end up in the street anytime. But in Africa, I, I am not afraid of ending up in the street because I will never be in the street. It will never happen. You understand what I mean? So um, in Africa, you can never end up in the street. So once you are here, you plan, you plan your, your transition very well. Your life is going to be very easy. Yeah. Uh, does Malawi have a, a visa on a level? Yes. For Americans, there is a visa. Uh, you have to pay a certain amount. I don't know how many US dollars that was. I, I will find out for you. But yes, if you are coming from America, you are going to pay a visa. You, go, you pay for your visa. But you, I think you are pay, paying it on arrival. Um, Sheo Ami says, land with farming, farming capabilities. Oh, yes. There is plenty of land that you can buy for you to farm. Plenty and plenty of land. Um, and many people, are, they are actually transitioning their land. They are farming land, selling it to people who want to build houses. I, I don't like that idea because even at my home in Balaka, um, I was chatting with the family there. They were saying that the, our land is an, under threat because the city is expanding. So it's almost, you know, the, the, the buildings from the city, they are now, when I was young, the city was very, very far. But now it's almost like a, a kilometer or so. So anytime people will be coming, creeping around our, our land. I was telling them that we should save money and start doing farming and we should, we should just build a wall around that, that, that area to protect it. Otherwise, we will be forced to sell the land for people to, for, to build houses. Um, visit Chicago too. Yes, Chicago. City, the city was founded by a black man, John Dusabo. Okay. Martin Luther King visited here, gospel, gospel and blues music started here. Many African immigrants are here too. Chinatown stand up. Okay. Wow. I must come there to Chicago. Yeah, that would be very nice when I'm there. You see, um, I, I, I want to, when I've built everything here and everything is settled and everything is moving smooth, 
I need to travel with my wife and we need to move or travel overseas. But um, we'll visit America and then we also have to visit um, Asia, Thailand and all those countries. But we, we have to go to America and see how life is there. Uh, uh, out of the city or semi remote, definitely not in the city. Yeah, the best places for you guys to go should be along the lake shore because then what you do is um, you're doing your farming, but also you can always go to the lake and just relax there at the beach, eat some fish and enjoy, and it's very calm there. So yeah, the best place to go it should be across, uh, close to the to the lake, along the lake shore. Uh, yes, my 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 have a access to water. Yes, you must have some access to water. But um, we go to we accept Boho too. Yes, because Boho uh, there's plenty of water in Malawi on the ground. In my yard, I've dug about 14 meters. I've got plenty of water. It, su it supplies us the whole whole year. We, we, it has never run dry. Right now, the water, people have built houses around me now, but still there's plenty of water in my well. It was almost full. So, yeah. Um, Pro Woman J says, 1,000 US dollars to invest to create passive income in Africa. Where should I put it? 1,000 US dollars in Malawi is uh, close to what? One, 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 one million kwacha. Yeah, I think it's one million, close to one million kwacha. Uh, that is not a lot of money in Malawi. Um, to, inv to invest, to create passive income with that money, I, I, I can't figure out what you would do with it here. Yeah. Maybe what you would do if you had somebody that you know you can just buy uh, a few cows. With that, you can buy, um, I bought my cow about 250. You can, you can buy maybe three cows. Just buy three female cows, find somebody, you put your cows in their um, car, and then you send them a little bit of money, just not too much, every month. And then those three cows, in the next two years, you will have six of them. Yeah? So in the next uh, two, four years, you have multiplied. So you have maybe uh, 12, 12 cows in the next four years. So 12 or 13 cows. So you, 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 to multiply those animals will be much faster. So that's passive income because when by the time you're reaching five years, you're going to be having a lot of plenty, plenty of cows. Then what you can do is you, you can come, buy land, and then move your cow cattle to that place and then continue with your family. Yeah, so I, I would say if, if I have I, if I can have 1000 US dollars to create passive income, that's what I would do. Because like last time I bought myself a car for 250 and it's almost a year now. Uh, I spent something like 20,000 kwacha every month uh, to maintain the car. 20,000 kwacha, that's almost another 200,000 kwacha. And then this year, um, I might be having another one, the younger one. So after the younger one is here, I'm going to increase a little bit, maybe another 10,000 to the maintenance so that um, they, they can be looking after it. As it grows, I increase a little bit. But this young cow, if it's a female one, in the next two years, it will give me another one while the mother one will be giving me another one. So in the next two years, I'll be having three, uh, that I'll be having three of them. So yeah. A lot of farming land indeed, yes. Johan Fisher, I want to get over 50 acres. Lakeside is prime property. It will be very expensive for that. I liked what I saw up near Livingstonia. Yes, hey, you know, along the lake, is now very expensive because the people who are living along the lake have discovered that there's big demand for their land. So, and another thing that has raised the prices is that because many people went there, it attracted agents to go there. Now agents, they are the ones who push prices in Malawi because they want to make a commission. So what they do is they sell the land at a very expensive price so that they get a bigger commission. All right. 
uh, yes, buy goats and cows for milk, breed them and sell, uh, sell, sell them. Yeah, that's what you should do. Um, and it's not, it's not a very difficult. Uh, imagine if you can invest 2,000 US dollars, you will have six cows, just get six female cows, already added cows that are big enough, that are ready to breed, six of them. Within a year, you are having 12, 12 cows. Uh, so after two, another two years after that, you are going to triple triple that amount of uh, cows. Uh, um, great idea about cow. I was curious of the cost of livestock. What about uh, chickens and goats? Yeah, chickens also and goats. Goats, they're low maintenance. Uh, but chickens, high maintenance. So it means that you, if you are, if you are going to breed chickens to be selling, you know, like uh, to restaurants and to people, it requires a lot of work. So you need to have people who understand how to do this business. Uh, I see there's uh, a few YouTubers from Gambia that are doing those chickens. I think Nice Gambia is showing, sharing videos of chickens. And there's another girl also from Gambia who was doing chicken farming. If you can follow them and see, you see that it's a very involving process. Like for me, I, I bought one cow. It's not something that involves me a lot of things to do. Uh, they that side they got a guy who looks after the cows and all the stuff. But if it was chicken, hey, I, I, I was sometimes even while I'm here, I was gonna have headaches. You know, chicken you need to, when they're breeders, the small um, chickens you need to make sure the temperature is high and all the stuff. Oh, the food they need you need to produce uh, special food, and that's very difficult. Yeah, but goats, cows, very easy. Um, pigs also is good business because they, they breed a lot of pigs at one time. One pig will breed a lot of, of them at one time and they grow very fast. Yeah, and like that other guy was talking about rabbit farming. Rabbit farming is the fastest business when it comes to animal husbandry. Yeah. Um, pro, pro woman says, good tips thanks i want to start small to avoid scams and find trustworthy people yes so like uh, when you travel to the country you need to first uh, identify uh, when you get into the it can be nice if you are able to find some reliable people uh, contacts while you're still there before you come but you can also do it you can come when you come to visit during your stay here it will be easier for you to find people you can trust um, if you guide, if you arrive here in uh, like any other country in Africa and you find a guide, now let the guide take you to villages and other stuff. Maybe meet the chief in the village. Oh, almost every location has got a chairman, a chief, or somebody. Make friends. So once you make friends, and then you can decide to say, okay, um, when I go, I'm gonna send some money. I want you to buy me two, three cows and stuff like that. And then after two, two, two years or so, you come and visit. You know, like to start settling down. Yeah, goats are better because they use less grazing space. Yes, and the goats can wander around on their own, and they will be able to come back home on their own. Yeah, cows can do that too, but uh, with cows, it's a, you need to have somebody to look after them. But goats, they, they just free range. Uh, uh, here in my location, it's here in town, yeah. But there's a few people who have got goats, and the manure that we're using, we just go and buy from those people who have got goats. They sleep with them in the house. Uh, I don't, I don't want, I, I don't want that. I'm looking to build everything on my land. I need space. Yeah, no, you can have space. You can buy land there. You get a lot of space here. Eric Bansi, how much is a female cow, brother? I bought mine at two hundred and fifty. Uh, but he, it was at a time when there was a lot of demand for the cows, but I bought mine at, no, it wasn't 250, it was 190, it was 190 that I bought mine. Yeah, I bought at 190,000 kwacha. So that is almost uh, 200 US dollars, if I'm not mistaken, because 100 US dollars should be somewhere about 85,000 kwacha. So it was about... 200, 200 US dollars, I bought my car. So that's why I was saying, if you have a, a, a 1,000 US dollars, you should be able to buy three to four cars. 
Yeah, mainly let's just be on the safe side, let's say three cows. And it also depends on the size of the cow because you'll get some that are very well grazed, some of them, they are thin. Like if you could, if you should go and buy now after the, because it has, been, it has been raining, so the cows have been feeding very well, I think you're going to buy the cow very expensive. But if you buy during the dry season, um, it might, the price might go lower. Um, so yeah, that's how much the chicken, uh, the, the female cow is. I want chicken for myself. <laughs> yeah, you want to farm chickens. Uh, yes, I have been studying this stuff. Wow, that's good. Ready much says pig farming too. Yes, pig farming is, is also good. Uh, how much is a female cow? Yeah, I've just answered that. That it is around 190 to 250, but I bought mine at 190. Um, great advice. I need to visit villages. I want to know the areas to find a good place to set up. Yes, that would be great. If you go in the villages, yeah, that would be great. Well, don't um, go in the city. It's going to be very. Lotus Eater says, uh, greetings. Greetings to you. Please. Um, like button, please, 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 please like button. Let's not forget that. We need to get algorithms here. What I've noticed when I've, I've finished my lives, there's still people that come to watch them. So, and the lives are helping to bring in new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that uh, you should be reminded. If you are also a subscriber, you, if you are subscribed already to our channel, but you haven't hit the notification bell, please do it. Because when I check the, the studio, it shows me that uh, out of the 5,000, it's uh, less than 2,000 people that have put notifications. So most of the people don't even know when I'm, on, I'm live. So please hit the notification bell. Yeah. I'm coming to see you first. Please, please come. Uh, when you come, we'll sit in here also, we'll do a video so that the other subscribers can see us and see that one of the subscribers visited me. So yeah, you are, please, please come and visit um, before it's too late because, we, you know, people are grabbing land in Malawi, just going, just going all the time. People are buying land and uh, there's a lot of development going on in Malawi in terms of building houses. When I came here, uh, I think it was uh, five years, seven years ago, it was bush all over, but now you can't find the space. There's not even a plot that you can buy next to where I'm staying now. It's full. And uh, uh, people have moved now almost, we are running close to a kilometer away, you know, getting full. So people are just buying land and, and building. Like It's like crazy what, what's happening here. It seems like some people are even having like four or five houses. People, Malawians have discovered that having houses is something that is uh, um, oh, it's another way of building your wealth. So people are just building. Like for me, I, I bought two plots in Blanta. So I just want to start building there when I've got, um, when I recover from this economy down, downtown, I'm going to start building there. I want to build um, some flats. There I'm going to build... Uh, one bedroom, one bedroom flat. So it's a plot like this because here I'm on double plots. That one is 15 by 30. This one is 15 by 30. So this way is 30 meters. Going this side to with that one, it will also be 30 meters. Then I want to build a line of flats, um, loft uh, flats, where you have open plan, sitting room, kitchen, and on top, then we have a loft where they can sleep with an, uh, uh, what do you call a suite bathroom. Here at the bottom, where the kitchen is next, there will be a bathroom for the visitors. So that's what I want to do. I want to build uh, those. And then in the plot, I can have about four of them. So I can be fetching something like 150,000 to 200,000 kwaja a month per house. So if I have four, I've got four of them, it's 800,000 kwaja, which is a close to 1,000 US dollars a month. That's, that's my plan. All right. Uh, Block 929, 100%. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm coming to see you. I want to be north of Mzuzu. That's even myself, my plan. If I should buy land along the lakeshore, I'm not buying it at the bottom here in Mangochi and Salima. I'm going 
top there to Mzuzu because many people don't want to go there. And what I've discovered is that people from the West, they're going to Mzuzu. And uh, um, Malawians and Indians, they're all in the southern part of the lake. But only people from the West, they go up there. I want to go there. Why are they going there? There's something that is there. So I want to go there, invest, because I know. And the, the land is cheap there because nobody is interested. So these uh, um, Zungus, when they go there, they buy the land very cheap. Yeah, because nobody, everybody thinks life is here at the South. We will buy land here. But I want to go that side. Uh, always on point, my brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work, my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, yes, building is in high progress. Yes, build construction in Malawi. That's why last year we've made a lot of money with the cement block machines. It's because of the construction is crazy now. And now after the rain, it is going to start again. In Malawi, it doesn't matter whether the economy is good or bad. People still keep on building. People are building like crazy here. Yeah. Yes, the north side is great. Wish to have also. Yeah, north. The, there's two places that I would like to invest, north and Likoma. Last time when I was in Likoma, I found land. It was very sad. I found land because we, we, when we were staying at this lodge, we spoke to the guys in the kitchen and they said, we want to buy some land. And then there was a security guard who was sitting there listening to us. It was in the evening that day. And the next morning he came. And he told me, I want you to come to my house. I want you to see some land that I have. We went there. It was a nice land at the beach. And me and this lady from Atlanta, Georgia, she, we went to, to Likoma. We see the, saw the land and we said we were going to buy the land. And that man said, the only thing I want is for you to buy me a plasma TV for this land. Imagine. Oh. So when we, when we left and came back to Lilongwe, I was working. So I never got a chance. And we even managed to get um, the, the plasma, but we couldn't go that side. And then um, by the time I was getting a chance to go there, we were told that man passed away and his children don't want to get rid of the land anymore. I, it was sad. And I had already put uh, that, that land on my profile on Facebook. But we never got a chance to get that land. Yeah, so imagine getting land just by swapping a beach land is uh, exchanging with a plasma tv that was going to be a, a killer a stunner you know um eric Ban says thank you a lot for the information you've been giving us uh, yeah i'm you're welcome you're welcome the, for me it, it's a pleasure I, I would like to um to assist to to help for those who want to come to africa and uh, because when you are that side you, um, you can't be able to go online. You can't go on Google to get information. You need somebody who's on the ground to be sharing this kind of knowledge. And not many people are prepared to share this kind of information. So yeah, me, I'm always willing to be uh, sharing the information. Johan Fisher is certainly, I'm interested. Good. Eric Ban says, John Fisher, what's going on on farm? Yeah, so, you know, on the farm, you, you can do, you can plant, like here, at the moment, in Malawi, our main export cash, um, cash crop was the tobacco. But now tobacco is getting banned in many countries in the West. So I see most of the farmers here are stopping to grow tobacco. They are now growing soya. So it looks like Malawi is going to grow soya in, ab in abundance. There's going to be plenty of soya in Malawi this year. So, yeah, you can go and uh, plant soya. You can plant um, uh, groundnuts. You can do. You can grow cotton. You can grow. There's a plenty of things that you can grow here in Malawi. DC sa says, Manyande that Zambia Zambian policy of visa on arrival has charged has charged or changed. Please check it out. Oh, so they have changed it. Wow. <laughs> you know, maybe. Um, what do you mean they have changed? Have they changed it for the better or they've changed it for the worse? Um, Eric Barnes, you tell us. <laughs> so maybe maybe they have changed it for the worst. All right. Okay. Um, I hope it's changed for the best. Yeah. So this is it. Uh, after this, I'm going to be sharing the video of the young man uh, who was fixing my engine.
uh, you know, this young man, uh, there's a there's a his there's a guy who I asked to come and fix the engine for me. So I don't know what happened. I think he got busy. He sent that young man who's 21 years of age. And when he come, uh, you know, I wasn't impressed because I know young people today are not serious, you know. So yeah, but the first generator he fixed. So what happened to the second one? You will see it yourself. Did he fix it? Do you think that he fixed the the the, the the he managed to overhaul the other generator. You tell me, yeah, huh? with the way you saw he worked on with the other one. Did he manage to fix the other generator? So you tell me, but yeah, the boy worked, and in fact, he worked with three of the um, engines uh, on my site. So yeah, uh, you tell me if you, you, you have confidence that that young man was able to fix that generator. So after this uh, live session, I'll be sharing that video so that you can see for yourselves. Uh, all right. Okay, so you you have done your your, your planning. Yeah? You have decided which country you want to move in. When do you come to Africa? And that's where that's where the difficult part is. When do you decide to quit your job to come to Africa? I think for me, like um, when I came back from from South Africa to Malawi, it was not a planned trip. I had a, uh, my boss. I had a very difficult boss who was a racist there, and he made he forced me to resign prematurely. So I came to Malawi prematurely. So it was a very tough difficult, tough time because I came, well, you know, not at the time that I had planned to come. But uh, my plan was uh, I bought a house and I was busy renovating the house. So my, that was my plan to build that house, fix that house, finish it before I come. And then I was going to take another holiday to come and sell that house. Then after selling that house, I was going to buy another one and then start fixing it, go back to South Africa, start working. The, the, after um, buying another one, the remaining money, I was going to leave it in the bank here, go to South Africa and work and try to fix this one, take another holiday, and then come and sell that house and then start making a decision to come back. But what I did, I just quit and I bought a house here. I, started, I, I had bought a house, but then when I came, I started finishing that house. I finished the house, I managed to sell it and then bought a second one. And, uh, you know, this second one, was in a bad shape than the other one. So, because it wasn't um, a finished house. So I had to finish the house Then I ran out of money. So I didn't have money. I had to go back to South Africa and work for another, I think it was six months or three months or six months. Yeah, six months to save money and buy more stuff so that I must finish this house. So I came back, finished the house and sold the house. So you can see it was a very tough uh, thing to do. And all this time when I was doing this, my wife and my children, we're still in South Africa. So I think uh, when you decide that you want to come, I think the best would be um, if you're both um, having jobs, the best would be one to leave. Probably, the, uh, obviously, the husband must quit the job, come to Africa, start setting up the whole uh, system. While the wife is still sitting there with the children, wife will be working, and then you must find your way because it will take you almost like um, a year or two to find your feet. When I say finding your feet, it's for you to understand how things are working. Because in the first years, you, will, you first two years, you will come to a point where you're almost wanting to give up because it's going to be tough. Watch Black Acres of the Gambia and uh, see uh, how they explain how the, the beginning, when they just moved, how it was. They will tell you that it was so tough that they wanted to leave. They wanted to pack their bags and go back. So when you come, the first two years, I'm going to be so difficult for you because you will experience what I, I have done a video called culture shock. You experience the culture shock and it, it will be so intense for you to a point where you will almost give up. But if you pass through that one, then everything is just going to start flowing. And then you can be able to, you know, um, uh, let's see what's going on here.
All right, uh, I was just checking the video that uh, I was editing now, it got finished. So yeah, I just, I'm gonna share, I can even share it right now, but I'll, I'll share it when I've, I've finished with this. Yeah, so uh, the first two years are gonna be difficult. So I, I can recommend that the first two years you come alone, unless you are having a lot of money, plenty of money that you, you can survive with, with your family for that two years, because, uh, I'm telling you, there will be times when it will be so difficult that you as a husband, you will have to live a low profile life so that you can, you know, to get this whole thing moving, you know, to get the light. Uh, if you're starting a company to get the right team to work with you, it's not an easy a job to do um, for you to find the proper accommodation, uh, you know, like mobility, how you're going to be moving up and down and all the stuff. So you don't want to be experiencing these um, challenges with a family where you got a wife and you know the family the kids they want to live a comfortable life and and they need to go to a good school and it costs a lot of money to go to private schools here in africa so you don't want to do that but first you are alone here you're struggling you are finding your feet until everything just comes together and once everything is come together let the children and the wife come i've seen people that have done coming with the whole family um, most of them have struggled and some have, su have succeeded, like Black Acres of the Gambia, but the Black Acres of the Gambia, the, the, the family, the, the, the children are big enough already. But then imagine, even that time, the, the kids were still going to second, uh, secondary high school, yeah? but still they were a bit adult, adult so they could take the, the stress that they were experiencing, the kids could take it. But it was tough. I'm sure it was very tough for them. Yeah. Um, I like the one and uh, and done trip. So even though I'm visiting first, it is going to be an extended visit. All right, that will be good. If you, the, the longer you're staying, the better, because it helps you to understand more things, you know? And um, you will find that uh, you, you can be moving, you can be in Malawi, then you can go to Zambia, then you can go to Rwanda, you go to the other countries, just to see which countries you like. You might not love Malawi, you might not like Malawi. So it all depends on the people's preferences. Brother, if you don't mind to put an email address so people can contact you. All right, let's see. Uh, let me put an email address. Yeah. Yeah, so I put it there so you can uh, I am already Africanized. <laughs> yeah, you are Africanized. I've been you, you you aren't you from Africa or have you visited Africa before? You just found out about Malawi. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, Malawi is a, is a very good country. Um, I, I love Malawi. The, let me tell you, uh, myself, I've got, a, I've got an opportunity to live in Malawi or live in South Africa. But uh, I was born in Malawi. I, I, I lived in South Africa for like 15 years. Um, but I choose Malawi. The reason why I'm choosing Malawi is because... Uh, in Malawi, there is plenty, 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 plenty of opportunities. When I say plenty, there are plenty. You know, I didn't know this when I was growing up in Malawi as a young kid or as an adult. I mean, like I, as a young man, young man, I didn't know that. I discovered it because I stayed in South Africa for 15 years. Life in South Africa was very easy for me. I mean, I could get jobs, and I'm sure if I had stayed on in South Africa, I would have gotten better jobs and even lived a much comfortable life. But uh, I always wanted to work for myself. Then I discovered that, you know, for me to work for myself in South Africa, it was going to be, it was going to be very difficult. Because in South Africa, uh, most of the industries that I would want to do business are already monopolized. And the people who have monopolized those in, uh, industries, they are already very advanced. So for me to start, for, for you to start from the bottom in South Africa is very, very difficult because you are competing with people, you know, like, like the best people there. 
I pity my fellow friends who are in South Africa because my fellow black people who are in South Africa, they have to compete with people who, who have been doing these things for quite a long time. They, they have mastered it, they've monopolized it, and they, have, they are the best in what they're doing. So if you are starting a business, say, for example, you want to start, um, you want to open a, a clothing shop in town in, in South Africa, you need to have a lot of money, capital, for you to start it. Because since these guys, they, they've been so many steps ahead, They've got the money, they've built, they've amassed a lot of money. If you want to go to find a shop in, in the city in Johannesburg to rent, you need to have a lot of money because the, the rent to pay every month is going to be a lot, a lot. And the, well, you also need to have a, a lot of capital for you to stock up your shop. So it's very difficult. If you want to start a, let's say, business of buying land to sell, Land itself in South Africa is very, very expensive. A 15 by 30 plot in South Africa, you will never be able to get it less than less than 400,000 rands. And 400,000 rands is a, a lot of money, you know. Uh, while in Malawi, 15 by 30, you can go in um, like in the locations here, uh, where, like where I'm staying, you'll be able to get it for 600,000. You'll be able to get it at uh, 1,000, uh, 1 million which is less than 15,000 rands. But in South Africa, the same plot, even if, even if you go to areas like Soweto, it's going to be very, very expensive to buy a plot. Yeah? And then you start building, which is going to cost you a lot of money. So you need to have money already, lots of money. But in Malawi, if you can come here with, a, uh, say, for example, 5,000 US dollars, 10,000 US dollars, you can even be able to, to start a business. If, you, if you're going to live a very low-profile life, you can be able to start a business and, 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 and push it up. And you can even buy land. I mean, land, if you're, if you're buying land here, plot 15 by 30 at less than 1 million kwacha, because 10,000 US dollars is going to be approximately 9, 9 million kwacha. So you're still remaining with about 8 million that you can even build a house to, to finish and be able to sell it and make some money. But you can't do that with that money in South Africa, you see? So, yeah, that's that's why I love to be in my country, in Malawi, because in Malawi, you can start, I can start business. I can, when, with 10 million, I can even start a business of selling hardware stuff. You know, open a shop, you start a hardware. It's a lot of money for me to do that. Yeah. Um, coffee, cigars, and business. He says, nice, my brother. Let's promote you as much as possible. Please, please, promote me so that I grow this channel. I need to grow this channel. I need to be at 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And also from next month, I'm, I'm monitoring because you, you, I'm sure you have noticed that I'm posting a lot of videos. From uh, next month, I want to set a goal where I must be having 1,000 subscribers a month. I don't know if it's going to be possible, but I'm sure with these lives I'm doing now, I am going to be able to make it because the live session is getting me at least 10 subscribers every time I do a live session. Okay. Brooklyn. Peace and blessings from, from Brooklyn, New York City. Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> Eric Van says, Brooklyn. Yeah. Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, welcome, 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 welcome. Please like button, like button, like button. John Fisher says, I lived in Egypt. Oh, what were you doing in Egypt? Uh, I, I, I always think that Egypt can be a very difficult country to live in. <laughs> what were you doing? Were you teaching there or what were you doing? Yeah. So yeah, where did we stop? We stopped at, um, you have come, you come alone to... Uh, live in in the country. Now, uh, the, uh, the 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 choices of businesses that you can be doing in Malawi. Like I said, it can be nice for diasporans to start a stone crushing business. And the second business is in property. Huh? Property. So, like I said, if you can plan your transition in coming to Africa very well, you can say come in Malawi and you say okay, you wanna invest and all that stuff. If it's uh, and, and check if you can be able to buy land. Lilongwe is the fastest growing city. Blantyre um, is almost uh, full, and in Blantyre, 
Lilongwe is going to be best for you to build houses that you can rent out. Blantyre will be the best place for you to build houses to sell. Huh? Because in Blantyre, people like to buy houses there. In Lilongwe, people like to rent house, uh, houses. So you can decide, okay, you, you want us, if you don't have, the, the capital is not too much, you can start in Blantyre building houses for selling. So you buy a, a plot, nice big plot. You go back to America or to UK, you live your life there. Then you save money, you come here next time, you start building your house. So you know, on the plot, you can you can wall the plots and then build a few houses in there. Or you can uh, de demarcat plots for you to sell the houses. So you build a house, start with simple houses, basic house, you know, like for the young people who are just finishing from university that can buy from you. A house that will cost to sell about 20 million quash. You build a house and you finish. I mean, if you got good money, let's say you, let's say you got a, you, you bought your plot and then you want to build a simple three bedroom house and you, you have got 10,000 uh, US dollars, you can build your house until finish. Within two months, it's done. And then you, you find a, an agent to sell you the house. Then you go back, they sell the house, put the money in the bank, and then you come back again, finish the other plot, things like that. After selling three or four or five houses, then you come to settle in Malawi. You're in business. You continue with that. While you're building houses for sale, you can be building houses in a little longer for rent. Building, you know, like your, your income and also building your, your business. You see what I mean? I suggest that you put the name of your country with block 929 in Malawi or block, or Malawi block 929. Okay, I'll do that. Um, yeah, I would say block 929 Malawi. If you put Malawi in the research box on YouTube, many videos will pop up. Okay. All right. That, that's what I'm going to do. If... If you okay, so you you mean that I must put the the, the YouTube channel must be changed to Block Nine Two Nine Malawi, or I must put that on the on the on 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 the description of my of my videos. That's why that's why I want to be in Malawi too. Yeah, lots of opportunities. Your subscribers will possibly grow quicker. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you put Malawi in the search box on YouTube many videos will pop up. Uh, I, I, please explain to me what you mean there. Where do I put on this on the search box? Should I put it on the name of the studio, of the channel, or where do I put it? Or in the description, or in the title of the videos, or something like that? Um, flat, flat bush. I don't know what that means. Uh, bigger blow from... Jamaica, good life, yay! <laughs> I am man, Ailey, 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 Ailey. Okay, thank you very much for coming to watch our uh, live session. Uh, okay, you was you were a high school literature teacher in Egypt. Oh yes, I would assume that most of people who go there in Egypt they're teaching there. Uh, hello, stop. I storm you, you got a point on that. The algorithms will not work properly. Um, I don't know what you mean there of the algorithms will not work properly if, if what happens. Uh, yes, uh, buy land and build a simple house. That is my first plan. Yeah, buy land, build a simple house there and sell it. You know, um, everybody who's who's building in Malawi for selling or whatever, they're building mansions, uh, and then they're selling like 80 million. And it takes long to sell your house. Now there's this market where you know the young people who have just finished university, they got a job, and then they are working for a company that is offering them opportunity to take a loan, but they can't find houses in town for 19 million. Most of them they qualify for 19 million. So. They can't find houses. If I if I should have money myself right now, 
That's like the plots that I've got in Blanta. I'm, I'm, I've been brainstorming. Um, that's why I was thinking I must, I must build houses and sell. But now I'm now thinking that um, I should be focusing a lot to, from now to build houses that I can be renting out. Yeah? But as, as I'm growing and uh, making some more money, I want to be, start building houses. I want to start with buying a house right in town there. The old houses and renovate and sell. That's what I want to do in Blanta. Um, I will be looking for investors very soon in that area. Um, yes, uh, add Malawi to block 929. Okay, I will do that. And add more to title than that explains your purpose. Like, what am I his channel is Africa to the world. Oh, it's like a slogan. Explain Explains what he does. Okay, yeah. I would, I would do that. Okay. I would do that. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure I must also watch those guys, their, their channels, how they're doing. I need, I've, I've just added the the picture on, on my channel. And now I also want to, you know, the banner. I want to design, I have somebody to design a banner for me. Maybe somebody in the, in the group can be able to design a banner for me. Oh, on, on my course was very disappointed because I couldn't find almost nothing about Malawi. Yeah, it's very difficult to find Malawi. Even when I was in South Africa, when I wanted to come back home, I searched on Google, I searched on YouTube. It's difficult. You, you almost get nothing about Malawi. Yeah, that's true. Um, not to sell, but rent to the young people. Yeah, you... You, you, you can build simple houses if you want also close to universities and then rent, rent, rent it to students. Yeah, um, the, It's very difficult to find student accommodation in Malawi. So that's also another industry, like opportunities for people to do. Yeah, so diasporans, when they come here, they are not supposed to come here to look for a job. That's number one. Don't come to look for a job. Come to Africa, to Malawi, to create a job. And the, the industries are in construction, agriculture, um, and tourism. So because if you buy land at the lake, you can you can build some round houses there, and then you can be advertising to fellow Americans, uh, diasporans to come here for holiday, you know, in Malawi to so they will stay in your houses. Yeah. So yeah, that's what. Um, please. Don't disturb the thing that I'm on live. Eh? Uh, that's, that's, yeah. So that's what you do. You start a business and then you settle. So have a plan. Just come up with a plan and I'm sure it will work. Yeah. Don't come to Africa to start uh, to open a shop, uh, like selling clothes and other things. Ah, that's, that, that will make, that, that will take long for you to, to break it, um, come to maybe hardware. You can come to Africa, uh, like like Gambia. The way I see Gambia, uh, after watching most of the YouTubers, I see that the, one of the things that most of the um, diasporans were struggling with was to get uh, appliances in Gambia. So it looks like in Gambia, if you go there and open a shop to be selling appliances, like house appliances, like like uh, kettles, irons, TVs, and other stuff, furniture. Uh, because most of the people there, when they want to buy something, it's always second hand. If you can be able to sell, buy containers and ship in there, and also spares, car spares, you are going to do very well. Yeah, but in those areas, like if you in Malawi, um, don't come and sell furniture here uh, because the competition is too high. Come to sell, maybe spares, you will be able to do it, but uh, still it's too much competition. The areas where we don't have a lot of competition, you know, where you can be able to fit in is in the construction industry, the farming industry, and the tourism industry. Those areas you are going to do very well. Uh, yes, it took a long time to find anything about um, Malawi. Yeah, it's, it's very, very tough. Water Gator says is Detroit. Hey, a lot of people from America today. Do we have anybody? I think we have one from the UK, if I'm not mistaken. We're not getting a lot of people from the UK, even our, on our viewers. 
last month we had you know on our channel the highest viewers were from america and you know the difference between the viewers from america and the viewers from the rest of the world it was very very big there was plenty of americans that were watching our channel last month i don't know what what happened but uh yes so i'm i'm hoping that this month is going to be the same but why are we not getting a lot of views from the uk and even jamaica nowadays you don't see a lot of views from there Huh? So I don't know what's going on. And I was, I was talking to my wife um, lately. I was saying that uh, I'm get, I'm not, I've got 5,000 uh, subscribers. And uh, the, most of the views that I'm getting is about 2,000 subscribers. Less than 2,000 people are active. So what's happening to the, list, uh, the rest of the 3,000 subscribers? Many, I'm sure many of them didn't press the notification bell. Yeah, but we'll see what's going to happen. I have to do some homework and check and check them up and wake them up and say I'm still here so that they can come back. Yeah, Aja Africa says from USA living in Gambia. Wow, how long have you been living in Gambia? How is life there? Please share share the experiences. What are the what are the highlights that you're having in Gambia and what are the the challenges that you're facing there in Gambia? Uh, so let, please share so that the others can also know how other people are coping up with a, uh, at J.R. Lewis, Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn. Yeah. So you, have, you are from Brooklyn, but you are now living in Gambia. Please share with us the experience in Gambia. Yeah. So yeah, do you have any questions that you would like to ask me? Because uh, at the moment, I am just about to go. Uh, and then I must share that video that I just did right now so that you can watch it. You must watch the young man. I don't know how many of you have watched that video because some people, they're saying they can't wait to watch that video. Uh, I, just, uh, I just says, it's amazing. Great weather, fresh food, kind people, yes. Yes, ah, that place is like very, very warm place. And, and the weather is, is good, of course, when I watch the YouTube um, uh, videos and the people, very friendly, very nice. I, I, I can love to be there. Go to Canva for your banner. Okay, Canva. Okay, I'll go and check and see uh, if I can download the banner there. Sure, sure. Thank you very much for that tip. Yeah. Tamara? Can you write Canva? C A N V A. Yeah, that's um, for for the banner. All right. Thank you very much, Anja, for that. I really appreciate. You know, that's a good thing of having a community on YouTube because people always help you with ideas and tips and all those kind of things. Like here, I am. I'm sharing tips with you, and you're sharing tips with me. That's that's good. That's how life is supposed to be. Any questions you would like to ask me? Archbishop Cornel says, I would love to go to Gambia. Even myself, I want to go and visit that country. You know, no matter what, if I fail to go to any other countries, but I must be able, in my lifetime, be able to visit Gambia. So if there's any people who are in Gambia who want to sponsor my flight, please do that. I'll come there anytime. Uh, what's for dinner tonight? <laughs> What's the dinner tonight? You know, most of the times we ourselves we don't we snack at night. We don't we we always we want to have a, a full meal during lunch. In the evening we snack. Yeah, that's all. Uh, so whatever comes in with with a salad or whatever we do it. But um, a meal we have it during lunch. We make sure we have a breakfast and we have lunch. But evening we just snack and then we go to sleep. I, I wonder what's the dinner for you there tonight. <laughs> uh, what is the best time of year to come to Malawi for planting season? Okay, uh, the rainy right now is we are in the rainy towards the end of the rainy season. So ne from next month or next of next month, people will start harvesting. But this month is the last time we're going to have rainfalls. I don't know if we're going to see rainfall again because 
we, it must be at the end of the rain season. And then uh, this November, December, November end to December, is, we, we're starting new rain season. So if you're coming to for, for planting, you should be coming around November. Yeah, that would be the best time for you to come. But the, if you want to come for holiday, the best time to come to Malawi is from now until December, December, January. That's the best time to come and visit Malawi. Uh, congrats to you and the family. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ted, in the, our travels, I hope you get a chance to meet. We, we uh, get a chance to meet you someday. Please, I'm sure we're going to meet. I, I've seen, you know, uh, the YouTubers that have been meeting, you know, the, the, your, their subscribers. So one day you've been in Africa, one day you're going to, well, maybe I might be coming to your country and then we're going to meet. But yeah, we will definitely meet. Walter Gator said, we're trying to get out of here. This great United, this great United States, 100%. It's not all that great here. That's just my opinion. I, I can believe you. I can believe you because, I mean, I have had this, a, a little bit of a test of the Western life. I was in uh, South Africa. You know, the Western life is a bit faster um, than the, our life this side. And when you look at how things are happening there in America, ah, things are, I'm sure things are getting from bad to worse. Um, I see how the economy, many people are losing jobs. Many people are going to the streets now. You know, many towns are being abandoned, which, which is a sign that things are not going all right. While we come here, like in Malawi, we are not abandoning cities. We are growing, you know. We are, the space is just being eaten up. We, people are just building. Yeah? Activity is happening. So if, if, if you are this side and you are creative enough and you are somebody who is able to see opportunity, life becomes very easy. The people who are struggling in Africa are the people who don't uh, who are unable to see opportunity. When opportunity stands in front of them, they can't interpret it. All they see is poverty and challenges. Huh? But if you got that mindset where you 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 look at a challenge and turn it into an opportunity, uh, Africa is the best place to be. No competition at all. I'm telling you, no competition. If I start making a tractor tomorrow, I won't have a competition for many, many years. Uh, if, I, if I start making um, um, solar thresher, I'll have very little competition. We will be like maybe less than 10, five people in Malawi who are making those uh, uh, threshers. And even in the neighboring countries, no competition. So this is the place to be. Yeah. So please get out of there very, very fast before it is too late. Yeah, uh, um, you see now they're even fighting one another there, and and they used to laugh at us and say we we are bad people we kill one another stuff. Look what's happening there. They, they, it's even happening worse than it is happening in Africa. So this kind of behaviors is not only for black people; it's for everybody. A human being is a human being, and the things are gonna get worse that side. Even. So come come to Africa soon, soon, soon. Uh, you are all welcome. You have a contact here now, blessings. Yes, I have the contacts. When I come to travel, visit, I will definitely come that side and then we'll meet. Uh, best place to rent in Malawi. Um, accommodation in Blanta is not so expensive comparing with Lilongwe. So in Lilongwe, accommodation is very expensive. Blanta is a little bit, of, uh, it's a, it's a city that is very congested, but also it was nicely nicely planned. So when you are in Blanta, you are almost like, you know, they, we got a couple of multi-story houses. So it's very beautiful and it's very nice. Uh, if you Google Blanta City and watch a few videos that were done in Blanta, you'll see that it's different from Lirongwe. Lirongwe is very sparse. Um, it was designed very nicely, but over the past years, we have... Uh, kind of wondered from the plans that were put for Lirongwe and then everybody just was just doing their own things um, in between here. So Lirongwe doesn't look very attra much attractive, but I'm sure um, as we go on, Lirongwe is going to be better. But Lirongwe, 
accommodation much more expensive, planter reasonable. Um, thanks for sharing, my brother. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, you, you use America. Don't let America use you up. Make an empowered return to Africa, not a run for failure in America. Go with one million in credit savings and insurance. Broke is bad. <laughs> yeah, you know, you when you are there, um, re remember if you if you are in an in an industry, they say for example you're working in a, in a uh, you're working for, at a workshop there, you know where they fix cars. I would suggest that if you are a mechanic in America you should work hard to learn more and more and more about the field you are doing. Because when you come here, that skill is diamond. If you are in transport industry, even if you are a driver, learn as much as possible about logistics. Because when you come here, there's a lot, plenty of uh, opportunities. There's been a lot of young Malawians who have been working in America and they buy those trucks there. You know, the international, they track with the big nose. They come here. Some of them, they have they, they, they start with one. Within a short period of time, they have got maybe six of them. You know, it's only that most of them have struggled to build, to, to grow their business because the, the family members decide they did not know how to run the business properly. So the business go down. But yeah, the young people have bought trucks and bring them here. Yeah. Uh, if you are working in, you know, on a farm, they also learn more about the farming. And you come here, implement everything here. So the skills you are learning there, bring them over and then make money out of it. I understand there's a, one of the young, uh, one of my friends that we grew up together, we went to school together. I understand he's winning awards in America for being one of the best mechanics. And I said, that guy, he should come here, you know, start a big company mechanic, maybe even training camp facility for training people this kind of work, you will make a lot of money. School. You can come here and open a school also. Build a high school, you know, and make sure that you, your high school has got everything, you know, like the kids have got a good laboratory, the kids have got good uh, TV, you know, like computer rooms and the classes are good and everything. Big money. It's also big money. Schools are big money here. Even in South Africa, you can open a private school there. It's big money for black people because most of the pri private schools in South Africa, they are for built by white people and it's for designed for white people. So even though black kids go there, that if you can build private schools, good private schools there, uh, targeting the black people, you make money. Um, you look at opportunity and opportunity looks at you. Yes, you know, you, you have to be able to identify opportunity when it knocks on the door. So many people, opportunity comes knocking on the door, they open the door, they don't see nothing. Opportunity turns around and is gone. Yeah? So you have to learn to uh, teach yourself how to interpret opportunity. And the opportunity disguises itself as a challenge. So all the challenges that you're facing, when you're sitting home and you're complaining about something, that is an opportunity. There is an opportunity hiding inside. It's like ground nut. You need to break the shell to find the nut inside. Yeah, so opportunity does that. Um, waiting on passport now. Okay, uh, the passport will come out very soon. Once you get it, yeah. Like I forgot to talk about that. Yeah, also when you deciding you want to travel, don't forget to make ways to get yourself a passport. Uh, pro woman says, that's a more productive attitude to have. Motherland needs us at our best, not broke and broken. Yeah, that's true. You have to come here. Don't don't um, leave America because you are frustrated. Like you, you know, like you, you are desperate. No, you must leave America with, uh, you know, prepared. You know, to say, okay, I'm going there. My mission is to to go and. Um, make an impact when I go to Africa. Yeah? You are a doctor, come and open a clinic here in Africa. Yeah, so yes, broke is bad. If you just came, like, 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 please don't forget to like. I have 20 people now online with me and I have got 38 likes, which is very good. 
Uh, so it seems like some people, they came and they gone, but they still liked. I like that. Thank you very much. I know many people are always busy. They can't always sit and watch uh, our live sessions. Yeah, but now, any questions you would like to ask me? I would like to go. I would like to go. Um, you know, uh, when I am when I uh, log off here, I still do a lot of work on YouTube. I still learn more stuff about YouTube. I still try to market my my channel to new subscribers. I, you know, I'm learning a lot on YouTube uh, Studio. Um, I'm watching to the end row. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. If you have been watching right from the beginning up to now, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate. I really appreciate. You know, I know it's not easy to be able to sit and watch um, because you have to do other things. So, thank you. I really appreciate. Uh, but you know, I, I, I'm enjoying to do the live videos more than maybe shooting um, videos. Okay, I've also started doing um, videos when I'm driving. Uh, please suggest ideas. What do you think about those videos that I've been sharing when I'm driving? Um, I, I, somebody said I should be commenting, but yeah, I'm using an action camera and the sound is not good. So if I must be commenting, uh, doing some commentary, that means I have to record separately. Yeah, but otherwise I'm just sharing that um, footage so for you to be seeing with the areas that I travel when I go and... Uh, uh buy materials and all the other things i'm only 25 but i want to go to ghana first i want to build an online art business in order to have stable income first i want to stay for oh, to uh, stable income first i want to stay for good okay what is um uh, online art business what is it about um because here in Africa, we, many people have failed to take off when it comes to, um, what can I say, anything that has got to do with online like internet and all the skills, programming and all the stuff. People have, have found it very, very difficult to, um, to, make, to break it here. You are driving videos give a good feel of the country. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It is possible to have dual citizenships. Uh, they have just made it now possible uh, to have dual citizenship here in Malawi. I don't. It was approved in Parliament. I don't know if it is being implemented, but yeah, it, it, it was actually approved. So I hope that in, uh, they have already started implementing it. In the beginning, it was very difficult because many young. There's a lot of young Malawians who are living in the United States, and most of them they have managed to get um, citizenship there. So they wanted to be able to have uh, two, uh, I mean, dual citizenship so that they can come here and have no issues at all. Yeah, so uh, dual citizenship in Malawi is there, but I don't know if it has been, it's active. Yeah. All right. Anything, anything that you want me to uh, share? Because otherwise I need to go. Um, if there isn't anything, please don't forget to subscribe if it's your first time. I am here to be sharing information about uh, how to come to Africa, about doing business in Africa. I will share experiences of uh, my ex my personal experiences when it comes to doing a business, when it comes to uh, maybe construction, um, all those kind of things. So uh, I think it's, it's if you have been looking for a place where you want to get knowledge, first-hand knowledge from somebody who's practical knowledge this is the platform yeah so i encourage you to subscribe and hit the notification bell there's a lot of things that i'll be sharing um there's plenty of experience that i've gone through that when i share it also tries to open other people's uh, mind and also get to other people knowledge to understand how they can deal with some situations when they are doing business in africa yeah so Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate. I'm going to be coming live again, I think, on Monday. That's when I'm going to come live again. I'll be thinking of another topic that I'll be sharing. I want to create artistic products such as bags, etc. Oh, no, that, that is, that is, that is uh, possible. 
yeah, I was thinking that uh, some kind of art like to do with IT. No, yeah, you here you'll be you'll be able to do it, no problem. Yeah. Um drawback in Africa to me is they think I have endless money or money grows on trees. I say or oh, oh, I should give it away anyway. <laughs> yeah, when you are coming from diaspora, the people here they think that you are good, you are swimming in money. Yeah, or when you're living in diaspora and your family is here, they think that you that side you're swimming in money. They don't realize that sometimes for you to make money, you have to do double work. You have to, you know, um, do three, four jobs at one time to, to raise the funds. They don't realize that. <laughs> yeah. Pro woman says, my first life. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Hugs to hugs. To, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So Monday, I'll be here again. And also, uh, pro woman put hit the not notification bell so that when I am live, you are getting notified. Thank you very much for being here. And thank you. I hope you enjoyed my sessions. And uh, don't forget to comment to suggest or what kind of what what's the what should be the topic for the next live yeah thank you very much i really appreciate it. don't forget to subscribe if you're new don't forget to like and don't forget to uh share this video to your groups on facebook on whatsapp don't forget to share yeah thank you